Hi, Bob from Pine Grow here. When putting together pages, you want as many different tools in your belt as possible. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you several different ways to add gradient backgrounds in Pine Grow, including how to use scalable vector graphics or SVGs as backgrounds. As always, Pine Grow strives to give you choices about how to put your pages together using just the Visual Builder or also using standard CSS code. This means that it is really easy to take advantage of a wide variety of resources on the internet. We will look at a few of these for generating both gradients and SVG backgrounds. Let's get started. We're going to start with a really basic bootstrap page. This page has a top hero section that currently has a solid background. And at the bottom of the page is a testimonial section that we can also modify to give a background. As with most of the tutorials, the techniques we will be demonstrating can be applied to any page, not just our demo page. So as we can see in the style panel, right now the hero section has a simple background color set through inline styling. And it shows up right here in the style attribute. We have a couple choices about how we can go about changing the background in this hero section. One way is to manually enter our desired gradient into the gradient input bar of the background section of the visual editor. And that's located right here. However, rather than put this in line, we're going to create a new rule for our styling on our style sheet. That way, if we want to change it in the future, it's quite easy. So make sure that you still have this hero section uh, selected and then within the style panel, hover to the right of the background color here. And then you'll get a set of icons. Click on the trash can to get rid of that initial inline style. Remember that inline styles have very high specificity and within our style sheet, we can over, only overrule them using a important declaration. So now in the same panel with the hero still selected, click to the right of the hero of the create button on the ellipse button. This is going to bring up a create new CSS rule modal that has this selector chain. And for this one, we're going to go ahead and select this particular class name. So it's dot hero underscore section to make our new rule. So we can see that it's going to target our currently selected element. And it's only going to target this one since there's no additional elements that it indicates it will target. Hit create. Now, if it's not already scrolled there, scroll down to the background section of your visual editor. You can also click on this hashed square uh, to quickly scroll there. And then we're going to click anywhere we want within this gradient bar uh, in order to set a first stop. So we'll just, for example, click here. Okay, now you can see that the whole gradient bar has turned a solid color and has turned black. Now if we click below the stop, we can go ahead and select a color. You can see that it updates in real time, so we can slide this back and forth to dial in the exact color that we want. And then once we have our first one selected and we click choose, we can now click anywhere else within this bar to create a second stop. So we click here. This time, let's go ahead and just for the heck of it, choose a strong contrast and we'll go with like a blue. Okay. So now what you can see is that between the beginning of the gradient bar and this first stop, it's our first color. Between the second stop and the end of the gradient bar, it's our second color. And in between the two stops, you see a gradual transition from that first color to the second color. Right now, the gradient is set at um, 90 degrees, which uh, puts it this direction, but we can easily rotate that uh, linear gradient any direction we want. So for example, have it this direction. 
Um, and then we can also um, select specific uh, angles here using top, left, center, which actually doesn't work in linears, right, and bottom. And that'll set our, our angles for us quickly. So we can also change our type of gradient from being this linear gradient uh, to being what's called a radial gradient. And that basically is where we will have the gradient starting at a single center point and radiating out from that center point. So going from the initial color to that final color. And again, we can change the angle this time. Uh, we can't use the, uh, the uh, angle meter over here. We need to use these. This time the center will work. And you can see that we can change that around any way that we want to get the sort of look that we uh, would like. So this sometimes takes a bit of fussing. This actually doesn't look like a bad gradient for just quickly choosing a couple of colors, but Pine Grow has a way of a little more quickly helping us narrow down what we want our gradient to look like in the form of the gradient library. So if we click on this button, which is located in the visual library below the gradient bar, gradient library, we get this pop-up. And this pop-up has a whole variety of different pre-made gradients. Uh, and it also has some things to help us out. So if we're always using the same gradients uh, for a particular project, we can quickly search for them um, and it will pop them up for us. We can add that. We can also, if we choose, uh, go ahead and select by dominant color that we want in our gradient and it will bring up a subset that seem to match um, what we're looking for. So that's a really quickly way uh, to add a new gradient to our page. The other thing that I think is really a great advantage of this gradient library is the fact that it allows you to, if you're a beginner, to sort of learn what the actual code should look like for making these gradients, which, um, you know, down the road uh, might become helpful to uh, expand out that tool belt. So you can see it puts up a nice linear gradient. In this case, we chose 90 degrees and then each of the different colors and the way these are, spa these are spaced out equally so we don't have to give uh, positions. But if we were to then move this and put in another stop, we can see now that each of the colors is followed by a percentage, which is its location along this whole gradient bar. And that's how the gradients are put together. Next, we should apply a background to the testimonials at the end. If we want the same gradient, we can simply make a small CSS change. So let's do that. So right now we have this top uh, section selected. Uh, and if we go down and select the testimonial section and then switch to the properties panel, we can see that it has a unique class of testimonial underscore section. So we can use that to target this particular section. Let's go back up and reselect this original hero section and then go back to the style sheets. And this time, instead of clicking underneath the rule set, we'll click on the actual rule itself. So if we double click, this now brings up a selection box and we can now modify that to say hero sec underscore section dot testimonial underscore section. So remember, we can separate different selectors in rule sets by a comma to have it target multiple things. So now scrolling down, we can see that our testimonial section has uh, the same background gradient that our hero section has. Let's change to how we can use an online gradient generator to produce a uh, gradient for us. There are a multitude of online CSS gradient generators and most all of them allow you to enter multiple stops and choose between linear and radial gradients. At least one that I found from Colorzilla 
Uh, also has support for SAS. So if you look right here, you can switch to SCSS or SAS. Uh, and if you're using that in your project, that's very helpful. Um, all of these sites, uh, in addition to having uh, an area where you can add in color stops, um, also have uh, um, uh, a ability to change again the direction, uh, the size, and then uh, all of them output some type of CSS that you can then copy. So to use this in Pine Grow, once you get your um, uh, once you get your overall gradient set, we'll just make a few quick changes here that aren't going to look that great. Um, you can then go ahead and uh, copy that CSS. You can see that there's a whole bunch of other things that you can choose to format. Um, you can um, also uh, choose to permalink this. So we're going to go ahead and copy that. Then we're going to switch back to our Pine Grow. And within this background section, we're going to go ahead and eliminate the existing gradient. Hover below the rule set to bring up that edit icon, edit line, click, and then simply paste. And now we can see that in both the header and the footer, our new gradient has been added. So one thing that you may notice about the online CSS generators is that they produce a lot more CSS. This is because they generally are a little older and add in vendor prefixes for every browser including many that aren't really in use any longer. For example, the linear gradient property alone, unprefixed, is supported by greater than 90% of current browsers being used. So if file size is of concern to you, you can go ahead and delete a lot of the uh, crossed out rules here. Um, so we can delete out the dash moz prefixed rules. We can delete out, uh, we're gonna go just delete comments. We can delete out the dash webkit prefixed. Uh, that's no longer needed. Um, but we are going to keep this uh, main background and we can also delete out that uh, filter. All right, so now that we've covered gradients, let's switch to SVGs. Gradients are really great, but in general, they have limitations. You're going to be able to transition in either a linear radial fashion between um, some fixed colors, but you can't really add many patterns. And so uh, SVGs are a really great alternative. In addition to a lot of design tools like Adobe Illustrator and Inkscape being able to output custom SVGs that you design, there are a lot of online resources. So let's call one of those up. This is a pretty good one, SVG Backgrounds. Uh, I have in the, tutor the written tutorial uh, another one called SV Generation, which allows you to do a lot more geometric shapes. But both of these sites have a number of different patterns to choose from and customize. Adding them to your site is as easy as adding CSS from the online gradient generators. So all we have to do is open the generator site. So again, here I'm using www.svgbackgrounds.com. Then you can scroll down, look for a pattern that catches your eye. I really kind of like um, this one down here called Sun Tornado. Then once you go ahead and click that, uh, you will get uh, the, the pattern being shown. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. I apologize. Just to get this box onto the, um, uh, onto the screen. Uh, once you click on a pattern, it'll add that pattern to the background. And it'll also bring up this customization box. You can change the colors. You can also do things like move those stripes around recenter it, change the opacity, which really isn't important for us um, in the case of adding a background. But once you get everything set exactly how you want, and 
then you can, just like with the online gradient generators, you can click within the CSS output box. So we're just gonna double click and copy that to your clipboard. Then go back into Pine Grow. And once again, just get rid of any of the other rules that are in here. And then hover below your rule set to bring up that orange edit line and paste in your new background. One of the neat things about this one uh, is uh, that it also uh, sets two other rules, background attachment fixed, or one other rule, background attachment fixed, that gives you this uh, neat parallax effect. But you can see now we have this background set in the upper window as well as in our testimonial window. So that really adds a, a nice splash uh, to our page. Overall, I hope I've demonstrated that adding some flair to your site with Gradient or SVG backgrounds using PineGrow is, is fairly easy. If you're new to Gradients, PineGrow is a great tool to visually learn how to change your code to impact the look of your site. I hope this tutorial has been instructive and helps you put your web pages together a little quicker. And as usual, if you have any comments or questions, please head over to our forum or send me an email. Until the next tutorial, have fun designing with Pine Grow.